So we got four children's drawings with disturbing backstories by Mr. Nightmare. Hey, what's good? How your day going? How your morning? How your evening? Your night? Whenever you're watching this video, I'm not about to talk your ears off, though. I'm about to jump right into this one and see what the hell these little kids drawing, man. But either way it go, you want to check out the original video, though? Link will be in the description below, but let's go. Children can use drawing as a way of expressing feelings or emotions that they don't understand. But sometimes, children simply draw what's familiar to them. So if a child is drawing pictures holding hands with strangers, there might be something more going on there. This is part three to children's drawings with disturbing backstories. Martin and his wife are the parents of two children, a six-year-old daughter and a three-year-old son. Martin shared with me something disturbing that he and his wife had discovered recently. Their daughter, who I'll refer to as Jess, loves to draw and so they'd give her all the art supplies she'd need to keep her quiet and entertained for hours. They have an entire Crayola backpack full of art supplies that Jess uses, filled with markers, colored pencils, crayons, and construction paper. Jess has piles of drawings in her room and even in her backpack, and most of them are normal, innocent drawings. However, one day Martin found a picture in Jess's room that he was kind of confused about at first. It was a picture of some random-looking woman holding Jess's hand, but it didn't look like Martin's wife, who was blonde. It was a brunette woman. Martin asked Jess who the woman was, and she said it was the woman who would visit her sometimes. Sounds like something a six-year-old with an imaginary friend would say. When Martin asked what her friend's name was, Jess said Lucia. This was immediately cause for alarm to Martin, so he went to show his wife the picture and asked his wife if it looked like her sister. At first, his wife said it looks like it could be anybody, but when Martin said her daughter said her name was Lucia, she gave Martin this telling look as if she immediately understood. Lucia was the name of Martin's wife's deceased sister, who died before either of the couple's children were born. Oh yeah, that got creepy. The couple went to the daughter's room. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, boy, I, you may know what I was thinking, you may not, but I was like, man, that's a pretty good cover up right there. I ain't gonna lie, I wanted to know the wife POV. He understood. But I get it Lucia now, was the name of Martin's wife's deceased sister, who died before either of the couple's children were born. The couple went to the daughter's room and asked Jess who exactly Lucia was. Jess again said, she visits me sometimes. Trying to get more details, the couple asked what time she usually visits and what do they talk about. She responded something along the lines of, she visits at night sometimes when I'm drawing. Martin's wife asked Jess to draw another picture of her the next time she sees Lucia this time with more details, and Jess agreed to do so. From now on, Martin and his wife would keep Jess's door ajar just so they could hear if Jess was talking to someone. It wasn't until a few nights later that while in the kitchen, the couple both heard Jess talking to someone in her room all of a sudden. So the two went towards the room quietly to listen to what she was saying. There were long gaps in between what Jess was saying, but she was clearly talking to someone or something that didn't appear to be there because she seemed to be answering questions that the parents couldn't hear being asked. At one point, Jess said, they asked about you when they saw my picture of you. They want me to draw you again. Then Jess stopped talking completely, and that was when Martin and his wife entered the room and asked if she were talking to Lucia again. She nodded her head, and they asked where in the room Lucia was. Jess turned and looked around the room, then focused on the corner and said, she's standing right there. Martin and his wife looked in the corner of the room, to nothing, yet both of them agreed they felt an uneasy feeling in the room and were extremely uncomfortable. Martin's wife said softly to Jess to draw what Lucia looks like right now, down to every last detail, <laughs> draw that and shit after right Jess now. said okay mom, the couple left the room. Jess didn't speak anymore, and the parents were left feeling a little uneasy. It was a short time later that Jess called her mom back into the room and so both Martin and his wife went back to her room, and she presented a new picture. This picture confirmed the couple's fear. This was the photo. In this new photo, with a lot more detail, Jess drew Lucia to have blue eyes, a small mole above her lip, and dressed in white. Lucia was buried in white, and had blue eyes and a small mole above her lip. Martin's wife was never close with her sister, having only attended the funeral for a short time, and so Jess had never learned of her deceased aunt yet. There were also no pictures around the house that she could have seen. Martin and his wife told Jess that they didn't want her talking to Lucia anymore. This was not because Lucia did anything particularly horrible in her life, per se. 
but rather that it was genuinely scaring the couple. The couple had a priest come bless the house and ask any spirits to please leave in peace. According to Martin, they haven't had to deal with any further instances. I guess I just always look at the cup half full. I look at that as a block blessing. Hey, if somebody deceased from my family came back and talking to my kid and ain't no harmful ish going on, dog, hey, shit, I'm gonna say let's keep talking. Because not everyone gets that opportunity, if it even exists. This was submitted by an art teacher from an elementary school. Twice a year with each class, the teacher would hold what she called draw and tell, which would have the children draw anything that meant something to them and then tell the story behind it. This was with a third grade class. As most students were drawing pictures of them and their families or pictures with their pets or any other number of things, one boy was drawing what looked like nothing but fire. The other kids at his table were noticeably glancing over and laughing at him as he did it. And as the art teacher noticed this, she went over to the boy and asked him why he was drawing fire. He's supposed to be drawing something that means something to him. The boy said, I know, I'm not finished yet. So the teacher let the boy continue to do his thing. As the students were finishing up their drawings, the teacher came back to the boy and now noticed that the boy had added a house to the drawing. I knew that was coming. The teacher asked the boy to come with him to the hall, and she took the drawing with them. When in the hall, the teacher asked the boy why he was drawing a burning house, as this was completely inappropriate for a draw and tell. The boy replied, no it's not. This is the house my parents tried to burn down with me in it. The teacher was speechless and didn't know what to say. She kept the drawing and told him to take his seat. I thought it was about to be a house fire that his family was in. I said, oh, this one's going dark as hell, but damn. The teacher was speechless and didn't know what to say. She kept the drawing and told him to take his seat and told him we're not going to do the draw and tell. When they re-entered the classroom, she sat at her desk for a moment, fighting back tears. Her daughter ain't and eventually shit, announced dog. to the class that everyone would be taking their drawings home with them instead of doing draw and tell. This one. Ain't it funny how, at least to me, that's how I looked at it when I was a kid. Oh, that's an adult. That's a good person. Look at them. They got my back. They're, they're grown. And then you get grown and you start realizing. And some people, unfortunately, like this kid, find out early. Yeah, all these mugs are pieces of POSs. But then, like I was saying, though, as you get older, you realize, realize like, yo, I ain't shit. So I know. These niggas ain't shit. And you can tell how people move sometimes. You be like, yo, that was shiest as hell. Why would you do that? Why are you acting like a kid? L let's get to this. Yo, it's wild, man. Instead of doing draw and tell. Damn, yeah, that one got dark. This one comes from another parent who wanted to remain anonymous. So all names will be made up. I am something, though. Don't get me wrong. I, when I be saying I ain't shit, it's just because I'm human. I understand I do effed up-ish. So <laughs> I know you do. That's all I'm saying. I'm real. I'm, I'm shit. I'm the shit. <laughs> hey, doggy ball, stop playing. Doing draw and tell. This one comes from another parent who wanted to remain anonymous, so all names will be made up. Brad and Jane are the parents of Molly, who was five at the time of this happening. Molly is a quiet and well-behaved girl, according to her father, which makes this story even creepier. Brad and Jane's bedroom is right next door to Molly's. The night the strange events began is when Molly came to her parents' room and said she's scared that something's in her closet. Brad walked her back to her room and showed her the inside of her closet to assure her that no monsters were in there. The next night, Molly returned to her parents' room, saying there's a monster inside her closet again. This time, Brad and Jane let Molly sleep with them, and then the following day, Molly drew a picture of the alleged monster she was seeing and showed it to her parents. Brad stated the picture admittedly creeped him out, but till this point, this all just seems like normal child stuff. Until one of the next nights, when Brad and Jane woke up to Molly crying and screaming, oh, they ran to her room to see what was wrong, and she said I'm bleeding as she had her shirt lifted up. On her back were what looked like two scratch marks. Molly claimed it was the monster. Brad tore the bedroom and the whole house upside down looking for anybody that could have done it. When the house proved to be empty, Brad and Jane had no choice but to assume Molly probably did it to herself somehow, either intentionally or accidentally. But as time went on, and the couple had time to think about it, the chain of events seemed too crazy to just be coincidental. While the couple had Molly ease back into sleeping alone, 
Molly never changed her story that the monster was the one to scratch her back. To make her feel better about sleeping alone, they moved Molly's furniture to the spare bedroom and made that one her new room. Molly came to her parents' room a couple other times in the middle of the night, but both times, when asked if she saw the monster again, she said, no, I'm just scared. Luckily, no bodily harm was done to her in her sleep again. Luckily, no bodily harm was done to her in her sleep again. True, true, true. This following picture and story was submitted by Giovanna, who had found this picture on her desk in her room because she allows her seven-year-old brother to use her desk to draw on. She found it strange from the beginning that her brother would leave this on the desk in the first place because normally he would take all of his drawings with him back to his room and hide them. But since he left this one, she felt like he wanted for her to see it. Upon taking a look at it, it looked like an innocent enough family drawing done by a seven-year-old. But then tucked away in the corner is a black figure labeled the Taking Man. Giovanna left this on her desk for a couple of days before she noticed the man in the corner after looking at the drawing again. The man is on a swing, but the family doesn't have a swing set. It could just be chalked up to the child being seven, but he had never asked their parents for a swing set, nor expressed any interest in one in general. Underneath the mysterious man labeled Taking Man appears to be some object which Giovanna thought may resemble a window or some kind of door in the ground. So she went outside to go check out the lawn for any sort of door, window, anything. But there wasn't anything. A few days later, while in the bathroom, which was across the hall from her brother's room, Giovanna was washing her face when she heard her brother giggling and talking. This could have just been him playing with his toys by himself, but still, after finishing up her skincare routine and rinsing off her face, Giovanna went to go check on her brother. His door was cracked open a bit, so she looked in and saw him on the ground talking to something under his bed. She quickly opened the door, and her brother got up and sat on his bed and turned his head to the team. It's real hard to get past this one. Well, these ones. When I hear these ones with the ghost stories and the figures, I'm not saying it's not real. It's just hard for me to go there mentally because I can't get past a child just having a beyond crazy imagination. Yo, real quick, the other day, I walked in on my son, and when I say this, nigga was having the most in-depth conversation I've ever seen in my life with himself and the wall, dog. At least he was, it was nobody there, so it was the wall, but he was just looking straight. Nigga, him and the wall, I was looking like, yo, this is actually kind of crazy. And I was just watching, I was like, but yeah, I'm, maybe he's just, it's just part of growing. Because I, I remember legit doing so, I, I can remember so much ish I used to do that. It was weird. My brother used to call me weird for doing by myself. It's like, bro, it felt like I had somebody. <laughs> I was enjoying it. That's all that mattered. I knew it wasn't no one. I'm not crazy. I knew that. I'm just letting you know that. But yeah, I don't think I'm crazy. I don't know. <laughs> but that second one, though. She quickly opened the door, and her brother got up and sat on his bed and turned his head to the TV. Upon asking him who he was talking to, he said he wasn't talking to anyone. Under the assumption he was just playing around, Giovanna went to sleep. The next morning, her brother woke up holding an empty glass asking if she could fill it with chocolate milk. And so Giovanna went downstairs to fill his glass, glass and come boy, back I up with a cup of chocolate you about to crank my shit. If you went in the kitchen and got that glass, that means you went in the kitchen where the refrigerator was at and you could have got some milk. Oh, maybe you can't get it on. No, you get it by yourself. Fuck you doing, little nigga. I remember one time my brother was asleep. I bit the shit out that nigga, dog. He, was, he used to piss me off all day. So one day he would sleep out under covers. So I was like, I know they going to hurt him because it's covers in between us. But I'm, I'm going to do this shit hard. And I, as the cover was on his skin, like, you know, because the covers on you. So I go under covers like this. And I was just like, <laughs> that nigga said, oh, did you fight me? I love growing up with siblings. That age was fun. <laughs> Under the assumption he was just playing around, Giovanna went to sleep. The next morning, her brother woke up holding an empty glass asking if she could fill it with chocolate milk. And so Giovanna went downstairs to fill his glass and come back up with a couple snacks for herself. She went into her brother's room to oddly enough see him fast asleep. She woke him up and handed him the glass, and he insisted that he didn't ask for it. She knew he did though, so she didn't argue with him and left the glass next to his bed. That night, around 4 a.m., Giovanna woke up to hear her brother talking again. So she went across the hall to her brother's room and peeked her head inside. And the last thing she remembers is hearing her brother talking to someone and seeing a black shadow in the room. 
I just the next thing she remembers is waking up in her bed the next morning. When confronting her brother, he denied any recollection of talking to anybody <laughs> last. It just caught me off guard. It was a sound effect. Let me go back. Is hearing her brother talking to someone and seeing a black shadow in the room. The next thing she remembers is waking up in her bed the next morning. When confronting her brother, he denied any recollection of talking to anybody last night. When Giovanna decided to tell her parents about the drawing and what she thought she witnessed the night before, they had a talk with him and he told them that the person in the picture is the taking man and he takes things and brings them back. I really trust him, he's my best friend. He also gives me red berries, I think they're called cranberries. Now he won't come back. Giovanna doesn't know if what she saw in her brother's room was a dream or not, but she remembers it vividly and says it didn't feel like a dream. And yet, if it weren't a dream, she has no recollection of what happened after she saw that shadow in her brother's room. Her little brother hasn't spoken of the taking man since. Try to get yo moments like that be wild because remember that day we were streaming not too long ago and I kind of jumped and I looked over and I said like, yo I swear I just saw something but it ain't knowing me I get to joking around like yeah what if it just erased my memory and I ain't supposed to remember what happened because I I, I understand people be tripping I could have been tripping but I was like dog I saw so but either way it go though man. Hey, glad everybody all right, especially that second story. Oh, my gosh, man. That one turned out, made a hard left on me, dude. Definitely glad he got, got about that crib. Hate that he have to deal with that traumatizing experience. Uh, Yeah, it is experience. Memory, though, I'm about to go ahead and get up out of here. Y'all go ahead and get up out of here. Enjoy your day as well. Enjoy your morning, your evening, your night, whenever you're watching this video. Doggy bomb, click that like button for me. Stop playing so much. And, hey, come to the streams, too, dog. I'm out.